In the previous video, we installed Ubuntu Server on Intel NUC. If you would like to check out that video, I will leave a link in the card somewhere here. You can click on it and find out that video. And in this video, we are going to install Zapix Server on Ubuntu Server. Hello IT pros, this is Jay Singh. Welcome to my channel. Follow me on Twitter at this is Jay Singh. And if you are new to this channel, hit the subscribe button, click on the bell icon as well to get all the latest updates from this channel. Any links mentioned in this video, you will find it in the description below. Let's get started. I have written a blog post regarding this video. All the commands we are going to use in this video, you will find it on this blog. So let's have a look at this blog. Okay, so if you go to blog.masteringmdm.com, so this is the latest post. If it's not here and you can head down to open source Zabbix and within Zabbix, you will find it here. So this is Zabbix fundamentals. If you have not checked out that, you can check it out. Uh, and in this blog post here, Zabbix installation on Ubuntu server. I will try to keep it up to date as well. And you will see that uh, a date will be listed here somewhere that the blog has been updated on that date. Okay, so in this blog, you will find all the commands which we are going to use in this video. All right, now we are going to connect to our Ubuntu server. So we are going to use SSH client to connect to Ubuntu server. Let's do that. Okay, on my computer, I will open SSH client, it's PuTTY, and uh, here I will enter the IP address, which is 10.0.0.8, and I will click on open. So here, login as, so this is the user which I created when I installed Ubuntu server. I will log in as netmon, and enter the password here. Okay, so I have logged in, I will clear this out. I just quickly update the font for you so that you can clearly see the text and it's slightly bigger. Okay, so that looks way better. I will maximize this. Okay, so make sure you have internet connectivity on your Ubuntu server because we are going to download some packages. And the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to update and upgrade the installed packages. And uh, let's check the internet connectivity first. We will ping 8.8.8. .8 .8. So you can see that it's pinging back and uh, we can test the DNS as well. And we are getting reply back from google.com. So, or it's actually resolving to 172 to 17255. 174, that's the IP address of google.com. We're getting reply back now. So we can cancel that with control C. So let's clear that. And now we are going to update the packages and upgrade. So sudo apt update and we'll do and and sudo apt upgrade and hit enter so it might prompt for yes so you will just enter y for that and here you go so you want to continue y and hit enter so it can take a while i will be back as soon as this is done okay so this is done and the next thing is we are going to download .deb file so to do that we will go to zabbix.com so let's have a look how we can do that. So here we will go to zabbix.com and then we will click on download and in download. So you can see that uh, Zabbix version 5.0 and OS distribution, select your OS distribution. In this case, we are going to select Ubuntu and OS version 20.04 database, MySQL and web server is Apache. So at the time of this recording, OS version is 20.04. It could be different in your case and Zabbix version could be different in your case as well. So the important part here is we are going to wget, we are going to download this here, .dev file. So let's just copy that. And in our client, here in our SSH client, let's paste this and hit enter. So this is going to download that. Okay, so this has downloaded, let's clear this here. And if I do ls, you can see that it is downloaded there. Okay, so the next step is to install that. So we do uh, sudo, dpkg-i and if you type zabbix and then just hit tab and you can see that it has populated that zabbix-release 5.0-1 okay so hit enter okay that's done we can clear this here and now this is very important you must do sudo apt update once you install that repo and we also do upgrade as well. So sudo apt upgrade and hit enter here. Okay, so that's done. So we can clear that out again. Okay, so this is done. We can minimize that. 
and uh, the first part make sure you follow it from Zabbix website because this is always up to date and from here point onwards you can follow along through the blog because I have added extra bits in the blog so let's go back to the blog here and uh, if I go to the second part so I will copy that I have added extra bit here which is my SQL server and I will go back here and I will paste that and just hit enter so this command will install MySQL, PHP, Apache as well. So we will check those versions shortly. Okay, so now we can check the version of PHP, Apache, and MySQL as well. So let's do that. So we do sudo php dash dash version and hit enter. You can see that it is 7.4.3. And if you do sudo MySQL dash capital V, hit enter, you can see that this is 8.0.21 sudo apache 2 dash v so hit enter you can see that this one here it is 2.4.41 okay so we clear that okay so now we are going to configure my sql server this part is also missing from the official zabbix documentation so let's have a look at it how we can do that okay so here we will type sudo my sql underscore secure underscore installation and hit enter and here the first option is validate password component in production definitely you would like to do that however this is a lab and i don't want to go with a super complex password so i will just say no to that and hit enter and i will pick a new password so this is a root password for my sql so i will just give it a password here hit enter and then password again hit enter and you want to remove anonymous users let's remove that and uh, this allow root login remotely i want to say no however in production definitely you want to think about it what would you like to say here so i will say no to that because i want to log in as root remotely and hit enter remove test database that's fine we can remove that and uh, reload privileges we will enter y and hit enter it will reload privileges tables now so that's good so this is done so we can enter clear here okay so now we're going to create initial database and also we are going to create a user as well so let's have a look at it how we can do that so here's the blog we have configured mysql server so now we are going to create an initial database so database name is going to be zabbix user is zabbix as well and password is password as well so i'm keeping all these settings default so here let's log on to mysql with user root i will copy that here let's put it here sudo mysql user root and enter password so when it will prompt so this is the password for the mysql root user so we have provided the password and now let's go back and we are going to copy and create this database so copy that and put here so create database and database name is zabbix character set this is coming from zabbix documentation so hit enter so we have created a new database named zabbix so now we are going to create a user named zabbix copy that and we're going to paste here create user zabbix at localhost identified by password so this is the password for this user so we are going to need this password later on so hit enter so we have created a user now we are going to grant privileges for this user on the database Zabbix. So we go back, paste here, grant all privileges on Zabbix. So this is the database dot star to Zabbix at localhost and hit enter. So once you have done that, we will flush privileges. So make sure don't forget the semicolon at the end. So flush privileges and hit enter. So that's done and we can quit it and semicolon at the end and hit enter. So let's clear this again okay so now we have a database named zabbix but this database has nothing in it so what we're going to do we are going to import schema and tables to that so let's have a look at it how we can do it okay so here we will go back to the blog and uh, import initial schema and data so this is the command we are going to run just copy that and paste it here so sudo zcat so this is going to import schema to Zabbix database and the password we will need for Zabbix as well. So when you hit enter, it will prompt for the password and uh, it might take 
10 to 30 seconds. Let's hit enter and provide the password for Zabbix user. So password is password in this case. So hit enter. So give it about 10 to 30 seconds. It could take more time as well in some cases. And uh, once this finishes, I will be back. Okay, so this is done. It took about, I think it took nearly a minute. Okay, so that's done. Let's clear this. So we can verify that. To verify, we have to log in to MySQL. So sudo MySQL user root with password. Hit enter and provide the root password for MySQL. So I will provide the password here and hit enter. So here we can use database, the name Zabbix and uh, use semicolon at the end. So use Zabbix. Okay, so this has loaded the database Zabbix and uh, let's use command show tables. So this will show us all the tables in database Zabbix, hit enter. You can see that all these different tables are here. Okay, so quite a lot of tables. So once uh, we have verified, we can quit that, quit and semicolon at the end. Hit enter and I will clear this out. Okay, now, so once we have imported the schema, the tables are there in the database. So now the next step is update the server config. So let's do that. So we will update the Zabbix server config file. All right, so if I go back to the blog, and uh, the server config file locates here in etc zabbix zabbix underscore server dot conf. So I will copy that command and let's go back here, paste that here. So I'm using sudo nano. So this is the editor I'm using to edit the file zabbix underscore server dot conf. So hit enter and we can use control W to look for the keyword. Uh, we are after DB password and hit enter. So I will use down arrow to go to DB password. Let's remove this hash and provide the password here. And also if we have uh, changed the user, if you're using different username for Zabbix, you can update the username here and uh, the database will be here as well somewhere. So here's the database. So if you're using different database, so you might consider updating that here as well. So I'm using Zabbix as DB name and username for that database is Zabbix as well. And uh, I have I've just updated the password, which is just a password. So I will do control X and Y and then hit enter. Okay, that's done. You can go back and verify that if the changes has been saved. Uh, we can just verify that. We do control W and DB password, hit enter. And you can see that DB password is just there. So I will do control X again, so it will exit out. So let's clear that. So in this step, we are going to configure PHP for the front end. Let's have a look at it, how we can do that. So I will go back to the blog and um, I will copy this file here and let's paste that. So it's sudo nano and it's uh, actually editing the file here, which is apache.conf, hit enter. So what we are going to do is we are going to update the time zone. So if you're using PHP 5, which wouldn't be the case, so it will be PHP 7. So we will need to update um, this here, which is date.timezone. So I'm going to remove this hash. And uh, here it says uh, Europe. So I will remove that and I will update my region, which is Australia, Melbourne. And uh, to find out yours, what you can do is, uh, so you have this list here. So here's a list of time zone. If you click on it, it will open in a new page and you will find that list here. So I have entered Australia forward slash Melbourne, control X and Y on your keyboard and hit enter. So this has saved it. So now we can clear that. If you would like to verify, you can go back and verify that as well. So here you go. So PHP, you can see that underscore value, date or time zone. That's the time zone. We use control X to exit out. So let's clear that. Okay, so we are nearly done. So next part is we are going to start Zabbix server and uh, Zabbix agent process and we will add Zabbix server and agent process to auto start when the system will reboot or when system starts. Let's do that. Okay, so I will go back here and I will just copy that. 
So that's the first thing where we will restart Zabbix server and Zabbix agent. So go back to here and sudo, make sure you use sudo, otherwise it will prompt you to enter your, your password like two or three times. So hit enter here and uh, that's done. So we can have a look at it. If you do sudo service and the service we are gonna check is Zabbix dash server and status, hit enter. You can see that it's active and running. So we do control Z and we are out of here. Let's clear that. And the next command is here. We will copy that and go back here, put it that. So this command will add these services to auto start. So hit enter. So that's done. We can clear that out. Okay, so most of the hard work is done. So now is the best part. We will see the front end. So let's have a look at it, how we can see the front end in the browser. So open your favorite browser and uh, browse to the IP address of your Zabbix, which is uh, in my case 10.0.0.8. And I will enter forward slash Zabbix. So once you do that and then hit enter. So at the time of this recording, the Zabbix version was 5.0. And in your case, it could be different. So click next here and you should see everything required should say okay. Okay, so once you are happy with that, PHP time zone, you can see that what we updated earlier. So I click on next step. And uh, here, this is important. So database name Zabbix and user is Zabbix as well. So provide the password. And uh, once you have provided the password, click next step. And I will just close that. So name, so this is uh, important. This is the name it will display your Zabbix server will display. I will call it technext-netmon01 and click on next step. So you can see that pre-installation summary here. Click next. Congratulations, you have successfully installed Zabbix. So we are done. So click on finish. Uh, you will see that the username is admin and password is Zabbix. So username is case sensitive. Make sure A is caps here. And uh, the password is Zabbix. So it's all lowercase. So click on sign in. I can close that. You can see the time zone here. So it's matching to the local time zone, which is good. And Zabbix is up and running. That is all for this video. We have installed Zabbix server on Ubuntu server. In my case, this Ubuntu server is running on this Intel NUC, which is actually I'm quite excited about to monitor my couple of servers and virtual machines. And uh, if you find this video informative, give it a thumbs up and show your support. Subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon as well to get all the latest updates from this channel. Check out other playlist. I will leave it in the card here. And um, I'm an active Windows Insider and uh, I, I have made some videos on Windows new features as well. Check them out. Apart from this, I make videos on Configuration Manager as well. I'll leave that playlist here somewhere. You can check it out as well. So I will see you in the next video. In the next video, we are going to look at Windows Agent, how to configure that. See you then, have a good one.